Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm François Picard. We're at the home of the brand new trade and industry minister, Munir Fakhri Abdel Noor. Thank you for welcoming us to your home here in Central Cairo. My pleasure. You were tourism minister during the transitional government that followed uh, the fall of Hosni Mubarak. You left politics and now you're back, but you're back under difficult circumstances. Are we going to witness a slow motion car crash where I'm going to go back to Paris now and there's going to be in a few days time a wire dispatch that says charges pressed against President Morsi and from then on there'll be a crackdown, there'll be violence, there'll be arrests. I don't think so. I'm personally extremely optimistic uh, regarding the future. Obviously it will be bumpy because uh, the economic and political situation and the social situation is very difficult, but I'm optimistic. Uh, what are the signs that make you optimistic? Because uh, we've spoken to a lot of people over the, the last few days who are very skeptical and they're very worried that we're going to see, because there has been a cyclical uh, over the years, uh, periods where there is a big crackdown on the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, come on. I mean, there is a big, uh, there are charges. Uh, against Muslim brothers who did not abide uh, by the law. It's as simple as that. Uh, I mean, if you, you, uh, uh, you, you shoot uh, in the streets uh, people, uh, you are uh, liable. Uh, you are accused. And I mean, it's quite normal. It has, law has to be respected in this country, otherwise it will never work. And you think Mohamed Morsi is personally responsible for the violence in the street? Well, Muslim brothers are personally Mohamed Morsi. I don't know where he is. I don't know what is his uh, contacts with his people. But Mohamed Morsi is definitely responsible for other major crimes. Again, you say you're uh, optimistic that things are going to get better, but neither side is blinking for now. And no, there is this uh, feeling that um, there isn't much talk going on between those who are in the interim government and those who've been ousted. It will come. It will come. You know, uh, when uh, reconciliation doesn't come in the midst of a fight. I mean, dust has to settle down and reconciliation will come. Uh, I'm optimistic. Uh, I'm optimistic for many, many reasons. Are there tangible signs? to be optimistic? Absolutely. Uh, the support of uh, the Arab countries, the support of uh, major European countries, the major change that we're witnessing uh, in the position of the USA vis-a-vis -vis the present government. Of course, uh, it uh, leaves uh, a lot of room for optimism. But that could be seen and for, then for, more the, important, for those who are ousted. It can be those what you describe that support can be seen as a humiliation, driving them further underground. Well, I think they got all the support of the West for the last year and a half. They have been given all the chances and they failed. They failed desperately. But more important than the support of the West and support of the Arab countries is that I think we are on the right track. We learned a lot of lessons from the first transition period between February uh, 2011 until the 30th of June. We made a lot of mistakes and uh, I think we've learned our lessons and we should not repeat the same mistakes. But you'll agree with One me that, you'll, you'll be agree with me that uh, it's not the Muslim Brotherhood that invented red tape, bureaucracy and corruption and whoever comes next has no, no. a big job. Of course, there is, it is not uh, the, the Muslim Brothers who invented all this, but they've been unable to correct this. And they made terrible mistakes. Do you want me to mention a few? Uh, naming uh, the governor of Luxor, one of the jihadists who did commit a major crime in Luxor in 1997. This is folly. This is a lack of responsibility. I mean, killing the tourism sector for appointing a nobody as governor of Luxor, one of the capital of tourism in the world. Uh, this Ma is they made mistakes, uh, no, but, but, no, were they, but, they more, were, but more it seems as though they were also pushed when we see the gas stations are suddenly reopened. No, no, come on. 
This is police are back out on the come streets. On, come on, this is absolutely not true. Police uh, 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 back to the streets because they antagonize the police. They absolutely antagonize the police. But you want to, te to, to give you another example of a crime, not of a mistake. Planting terrorists in, in, in Sinai is a crime. And you blame Planting, You think it's the Muslim Brotherhood who's behind it? Of course. Them? And I don't think it is a fact. Of course. When you have a, a car that is in, in, in uh, Sinai, I think it is a crime. And yes, they are absolutely responsible for that. They got their support from those people. Having this uh, kind of relationship with Hamas is another crime. Look, I mean, they are undefendable. They made horrific mistakes and they lost all uh, uh, confidence and support from the Egyptian people. Which, which I guess brings us now to the task that lies ahead for you. Of course. And uh, we have seen the new uh, planning minister saying that for the time being, this new interim government doesn't need an IMF loan. I'm not sure that he said this. He I mean, was quoted as saying by Egyptian yeah, media yeah. That, that that loan can wait for the time being uh, the support they're getting from the Gulf state, this sudden influx of 12 yeah. billion in pledges, in petrol, in grants, that that will tide them over for the time being. No, I'm not sure he said that so clearly. He said we can wait and take our time to plan and negotiate with the IMF because we're not pressed in time due to the support, the financial support we're getting from the Arab state. Isn't it more because but, the IMF loan, well, it's a little bit more niggly. There's conditions attached. There's sure, uh, sure. having to make unpopular decisions. Yes, we have, to make, we have to make unpopular decisions uh, at a very difficult time. But again, we realize the importance of this uh, loan. We realize the importance of signing this loan with the IMF because, as you know, it's a recognition of good management of the economy. And we have to get that recognition because it will open to Egypt uh, financial, uh, the financial markets and uh, the uh, support of international and national institutions. Even if the IMF, when it comes time to sign the piece of paper, tells you, well, you're going to have to now tell the military to uh, ease up on its economic interests, and you're going to have to... I mean, by, by the way, this is another fallacy. Well, this is another fallacy uh, that is uh, spreading in the uh, Western media, saying that uh, the economic interests of the military is, represent 60% or 70% of the Egyptian economy. It is absolutely a fallacy. <laughs> the economic interest of, of the military is probably below 10%. And definitely much less than the percentage of the economic interest of military in the U.S. or in any Western countries, any Western country. Uh, look, we I can, mean, all right, we can argue about those numbers. Yes, we can but, argue about those numbers, but and the I can prove subsidies, them to you. Subsidies on things like petrol, when uh, uh, this is another issue. Yeah. When the coffers of the state are empty, is that, that is right? This is a very difficult, very difficult decision to take, but we have to take it. We have, at some point in time, this is a decision, a decision that has to be taken. And by the way, since you're opening this, uh, this issue, I think the biggest mistake that Mr. Mubarak made when he was really uh, uh, managing this country as a dictator, he could have taken those kind of decisions to streamline the, uh, 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 the uh, subsidy issue, to uh, solve the problem of the, f the, the Egyptian budget, but he did not have the courage to, to, to do it while he was really, I mean, he was acting as a dictator and could have taken it very easily. But we, any responsible government in Egypt today, will have to tackle this problem. It has to be done with tact. It has to be done uh, without uh, putting pressures on the poor. Uh, rich people and well-off people will have to take the social responsibility into consideration and bear the consequences. Will it mean, for instance, in your sector, streamlining uh, state-owned companies that are not very well run? Um, that's going to be tough, especially if we've seen that uh, we have to do right it. now, it's, uh, we've just seen the precedent has been set with when things aren't going your way, you get a lot of people out in the street and you kick out the 
elected president. Sure. sure. Well, kick out the elected president if the elected president is unable to talk sensibly to the people. Uh, kick out the elected president uh, uh, if uh, he is so desperately failing. Uh, I think uh, we need to have a democratic uh, government, a government that takes into consideration the needs of the people, that is able to communicate his ideas, to listen, to act and react. And this is something uh, Mr. Morsi has been unable to do. All right, we'll see if uh, it happens in the, in the year to come. I wish you best of luck. I know you've got a lot on your plate. I want to thank you very much again, Munir. Abdel Fakri for, for welcoming us uh, to your home and we want to thank you for joining us here in the France 24 interview. <laughs>